Hey guys, what's going on? Godzilla here. Okay, we I am going to be reacting to a video called Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah Time Travel Explained by Wikizilla. This is a video on Wikizilla's channel. I left a link down in the description below so that way you can see the original video in its entirety. I will be watching the video on my phone, however, because if I screen share, it's going to lag. Hey, Kaiser fans, Tiny here. Today, we're tackling the most confusing thing in the Godzilla series. The time travel clock from Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah. <laughs> Start things off, I'll detail what the Futurians, the 23rd century humans behind this whole thing, believed they were doing. The Futurians knew that there was a Godzilla source on Lagos Island and thought that it was exposed to the Castle Bravo test in 1954. Castle Bravo is another short time for the American hydrogen bomb. That this same Godzilla then reappeared in 1984. Okay, I want to point out everybody, there's a there was a nickname for the American hydrogen bomb, which is Castle Bravo. So, if you hear the word Castle Bravo mentioned in this video, just think of it as the Americans' first hydrogen H bomb testing. Okay? Hold up, let me get my speaker. I'll be right back. Hey, Kaiser fans, tiny thing. Believe they were doing. To start things off, I'll detail what the Futurians, the 23rd century humans behind this whole thing, believe they were doing. The Futurians knew that there was a Godzilla source on Lagos Island and thought that it was exposed to the Castle Bravo test in 1954, becoming the Godzilla that attacked Tokyo that same year and assumed that this same Godzilla then reappeared in 1984. Hmm. They believed that if they transported the Godzilla source to the Bering Sea, it would die and Godzilla would be erased from history. They followed with this, and so they switched the Godzilla source with three Dorats, and the Godzilla source is sent to the Bering Sea. This theory of the 1954 Godzilla being the same as the 1984 through 1989 Godzilla came from the character Kenichiro Terasawa's in-universe book, The Birth of Godzilla, which the Futurian's computer stated had a 90% chance of being correct. Mm -mm. Of course, we know that the book was not correct. The Godzilla source on Lagos Island was not, in fact, the original Godzilla. The Godzilla source was an entirely different being altogether. Basically, to make things clear, the Futurians thought that the Godzilla source would become the 1954 Godzilla, and that this 1954 Godzilla would stay alive and return in 1984 and 1990. They thought that Godzilla 1954 and the Heisei Godzilla were the same, which they were not. Got it? Okay, now let me go ahead and explain what really went on up to this point. In 1954, the Castle Bravo H-bomb test irradiated and awakened the first Godzilla. Who attacked Tokyo and it was oh, they're using BioWars music! Holy shit! I don't know how they got rights to use these musical cues! The Godzilla Swords, which the Futurians have transported to the Bering Sea, lay dormant there. It's important to note that the Godzilla Swords were spread through time, as some fans misinterpret. The Godzilla Swords was placed in the Bering Sea in 1944 and remained there for several decades. Sometime before 1984, a Russian nuclear submarine crashed in the Bering Sea irradiating the Godzilla source and transforming it into a new Godzilla, which was 30 meters taller than the first one. This Godzilla lived and presumably slept underwater near Daikoku Island until 1984, when a volcanic eruption woke him up. This is where the events of Godzilla 1984 and Godzilla vs. Biollante happened. These two movies were not erased from- I want to clarify this, it's called Biollante. Biollante, everybody. Not Biollante. It just doesn't sound right. History. 
in Godzilla vs. Final Monte, the point is made that when Godzilla moves unexpectedly, the JSDF will be unable to track him. This is shown what Godzilla is expected to Oh, and if you hear the words JSDF, it's Japanese Special Defense Forces, if you don't know what the abbreviation for JSDF means. ...serpents in Ise Bay, but instead shows up in Osaka Bay, catching the JSDF completely off guard. This is going to be important soon, so keep it in mind. So, after Godzilla vs. Bawante, Godzilla returns to the ocean, infected by the anti-nuclear energy bacteria, and stays immobile for a few years. When they come back after the Futurians have moved to Godzilla, Godzilla is no longer in that spot, so everyone assumes Godzilla has been erased from history, even though everyone still remembers him. Some fans take the Futurians' claim that Godzilla has completely vanished at face value, and assume he was in fact erased from history. However, this is not true, and further observation of the film's events should make this clear. Due to King Ghidorah's appearance and Godzilla's seeming absence, which confirms to the characters in the movie that the Futrians did erase Godzilla from history and move him to the Bering Sea, the government is desperate to stop King Ghidorah, so they panic and allow Yasuaki Shinbo to send a nuclear submarine to the Bering Sea so it can irradiate the Godzilla source they think is there and turn it into Godzilla. Godzilla, weak and infected by the Anim, finds the sub and feeds on it, curing his anib infection and making him grow. Okay, I want to read what, the, what it says here. Notice that Godzilla is not a Godzilla source. He is already Godzilla. So basically, guys, if you are all hardcore Godzilla fans, and you watch this movie, and you look at it in continuity perspective, He's explaining like there were still two Godzillas. Even if one dies, there's going to still be another. So yeah, during the Showa era, we had another Godzilla sleeping in the Bering Sea this entire fucking time. We've had two Godzillas in the same continuity. Let that sink in for a minute. Think of it. We had two Godzillas. Godzilla thinking he was the only one of his kind. A.K.A. That's where my name came in. But this Godzilla is weak by the anti-nuclear energy bacteria. Remember. Remember. He specifically said that Godzilla was not erased from history or removed from history. He was just te he was just not. The first Godzilla was killed by the oxygen destroyer, so that's one Godzilla down. We still have one Godzilla left, and apparently the Soviet. Ignore that. Fifteen more meters in height. And of course, the reason that everyone thought Godzilla was now Godzilla's source in the Bering Sea was because Godzilla decided to move, and the JSD have completely lost track of him, like I mentioned before. Miki Saigusa even sensed Godzilla moving through the ocean around that time. All of this is supported in later films, because the events of previous films are explicitly referenced. Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla mentions Biolante, and Godzilla vs. Destoria mentions the Oxygen Destroyer and explicitly states that the 1954 Godzilla was a different monster than the Heisei Godzilla. So, to summarize, the real point of the whole thing is that the Futurians did not change the timeline, and actually created the Heisei The, the Futurians were dumb enough to create the Heisei timeline. They didn't erase the Heisei timeline. They went and uh, freaking made this Godzilla. They had nothing to do with this. They were complete morons from the jackass start. All they did was fuck up and, and basically say, oh, we think we have a way to get rid of Godzilla, when all they did was make a brand new Godzilla much more taller and not Friendly in the least. Because if you notice in Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah, which is a good movie, don't lie, I love it. You will notice that Godzilla... 
that the Futurian leader says, This new Godzilla is unfriendly and will destroy Tokyo. Don't you even fucking dare, you damn lizard. Got a fucking little lizard right there. Godzilla. In essence, the Futurians were idiots who believed the 1954 Godzilla and the Heisei Godzilla were the same creature, and were both the dinosaur from Lagos. Hence, why they thought that moving the Godzillasaurus would somehow erase Godzilla from history. Lie. Anyway, that was the Godzilla vs. King Edward time travel plot explained. Yeah, that was a time travel video. Here's what else happened. I hope that this cleared up the whole thing for everyone. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Okay, I want to cut that part out because basically there... I don't know if the music in here was usable. But yeah, guys. If you have not seen this video, I left the link down in the description below. I give full credit to Wikizilla. He has rights to the video, so he has rights to this one. Jeez, you're a big motherfucking lizard. Don't think you can just impersonate Godzilla, you damn lizard. Look how big this little fucker thinks he is. Just because he's trying to look like Godzilla doesn't mean he is Godzilla. <sighs> Stupid jackass. Okay, if you guys want me to react to my own video, episode 555, opening gifts, let me know down in the comment section below. Godzilla 2019 versus King of the movie, please. Okay, we are going to take a look at my opening. We are going to take it. We are going to take a quick look at my. Uh, video that I want to watch. Okay, guys? Take a quick look. Opening gifts. Because I could have... Because I could have swore when... When I was looking this video up, I could not find it first, thinking, Oh, did I delete the video from my channel? No, I would never delete a Christmas video with my mom. That was my mom's voice.
And I did this during the night while my mom was asleep. The one with the less, um, taste on it. That was such a giggly douchebag. That was actually my wireless Sega Genesis, which I have no more. Now I can get rid of the calluses on my feet. And mine, too. Oh, thank you. You guys. Even though I was not supposed to take a listen. Oh, now, now I can get rid of the calluses on my feet. And mine, too. Don't think so. Everybody needs a gag gift. Okay, let's see what I got. I think this is from Santa because apparently... I'm I was naive enough to still believe in Santa at that time. This first one was actually the... the Dragon Ball Z Battle of Gods movie, which I have no more except on YouTube. Hi, and it's Jim Pepper's Mad Fresh. Mad Fresh is on YouTube. For $9.99. Oh, that's the one that I I was hoping she would have got a Five Nights at Freddy's calendar, but no, a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I said I would beat her up just because she lied to me. But yeah, guys, this is a Christmas video where I open the presents with my mom. So Sonic the Hedgehog on here. Of course, red and yellow. I mean, yellow. It came with yellow and white cords, and it came like with like a cell phone charger. It looked like it came with a cell phone charger, but no. 
It didn't. Most cell phone chargers are like are like this. It came like with a plug like this at the very top top right here. It came like that. White shorts. Okay, just what I need. And it has to be like a cell phone charger. Actually, I think I got a charger already that uses both <laughs> the Nintendo and the Sega Genesis. So, are you happy now? I'm satisfied, Mom. I've been bitching at you about this system. Yes, I was literally all. Until that day, I was. Bitching and complaining if she had got the system or not. And she had the nerve to go and lie to me. And this was originally at $40. She got it at like $24. She got it at 18%. She got it $18 cheaper. Wow, computer, you're already telling me you're almost dead. At 51%, guys, it tells me 15 minutes left until it completely dies. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with my computer. I guess I might have to just sit here and let it die. But guys, this is the end of the video. I'm not going to drag it out too much longer. Let me check the stream. Let me check the... Let me check the chat real quick and then I will leave. Let me check the Camera Godzilla. What are you guys talking about? Okay, guys, so unfortunately, I gotta stop the video before my computer kills the computer by itself. I mean, before the computer shuts down on itself, and I lose footage. I know you're thinking, what footage? All we've heard is audio. Well, that's the fun part. I'm going to end the stream now, guys, because my computer is at 64, I mean, 46%, 14 minutes left. I don't know why it wouldn't even go up to an hour of viewing usage. It, wouldn't, it won't even let me use the whole computer for a freaking hour. Actually, before I go, I want to see, like, what would happen if I plugged in the charger right now. Let's see how long it would take for the mm, orange light to turn blue. Yeah, because apparently when it's apparently when it's less than fit, whenever it's at any number, it will immediately turn blue, signaling oh full power bullshit. Does that mean I need to get a new battery for my computer, guys? 
And I don't mean like this type of battery. I mean like a brand new computer battery. Let me know down in the comments below what the technical issue is with my computer. Okay? And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye. Whoops.